Hi everyone, my name is Dee. I am the owner of Fire Within Coaching LLC. So this is my new series, What Lights Your Fire? So light, What Lights Your Fire, um, the web series and my company um, is a company that's aimed to inspire others. So we want to inspire people by spreading positivity, by spreading the importance of human connection and also celebrating others. So speaking of celebrating, hello, Dr. Will Ramey. How are you today? Hello, Dee. How are you? I am super pumped to be the first guest on your new show. I know. I'm so excited. Uh, so for everyone, Will and I met um, during our coaching foundation um, organization um, as we were doing that, and we just instantly hit it off. Um, Will, is you are such an inspiration, and I'm so happy to have you on here as well. Oh, thank you so much, Dee. Yeah, it's the importance of building community is there, and uh, you know we both needed some some peer coaching and uh, stepped out of our comfort zone, and you know struck a, struck a chord and a spark from there. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what we're about. We're about you know striking, starting that fire, striking you know the match, and making sure that everybody is you know getting something positive of the interactions and the impact. Um, so will. You are a um, off, a former officer of the U.S. Army. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So I spent um, 13 years in the Army. I've served in the National Guard. I've served on active duty. I've served in the Army Reserves. Uh, and that's really where I cut my teeth with, with leadership was uh, joining the Army at 17. Uh, spent that time in, in uniform and, and learned the, uh, you know, the military model of how to lead and bring people and, and bring teams together. Um, yeah. most recently I, I just started my own, uh, company shared leadership LLC, which is a leadership and team development solutions company where we offer coaching and we offer corporate training and workshops where we specialize in experiential learning, uh, activities. I love it. So is that what lights your fire? I tell you what, you know, the, the reason behind the, the company was I get just a surge of energy when I can engage with people, whether it be in groups or one-on-one -on -one coaching and, and training, I get to help them grow and reach their full potential so teams can achieve success, success together. That's what lights my fire. And having an opportunity to do that as a, a business owner where I can go out and spark change in, in positive workplace environments uh, is what really just gets me up in the morning and keeps me up late at night so I, I can keep helping organizations get better. I love it. It's like a surge of caffeine. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. High test. Don't no no decaf here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of what, you know, finding what you uh what strikes that match is kind of throwing yourself out there and being like, well, what makes me feel? What, what really surges through my veins? Um, so let's talk a little bit about what subjects um you specifically uh talk with of, with <clears throat> your clients yeah so when i uh when i'm in a team environment it really is about building connection breaking down silos and we do that through communication trust mutual support um and developing a, a a team mindset and a shared leadership mindset so we believe that you don't need to have a, a specific title to lead leadership is about influence and that ebbs and flows throughout a team as they they need it when i get into one-on-one -on -one, uh you know, coaching or one-on-one -on -one development, it really is about, I love helping new supervisors, new leaders transition into their role and help them accelerate that. How you spend your first hundred days is super critical. And that comes with chaos. It comes with stress. It comes with, with this, this, this weight uh, upon you because you're, you're now leading people. You're responsible for more than just a, a project or a task. Right. So I specialize in helping people proactively cope to get ahead of workplace stressors understand and leverage their power. And what I found out recently is, you know, two biggest stressors uh, that I found when I've coached a dozen leaders over this past year is time management and confl uh, conflict or, or difficult conversations. And so I can give them frameworks and give them uh, examples of activities they can do to help take their time back, work through those conversations, and then bring their team together. Yeah. Well, and when you said that, like I was, I thought my head was going to fall off. I'm like, yes, yes. Because um, so a lot of times people, they just don't know how to speak to one another. And it's not 
fall, um, you know, it's just we as a society don't always know how to speak to one another and to communicate effectively. Um, so that's great that you're teaching these leaders how to do that. And now, are, and with the coping mechanisms, are you teaching them to stay positive on those days where they're just like, I don't want to do it anymore? 100%. So we go through and talk about the, the stress cycle, right? And, and how you appraise stress and you can appraise it as a challenge or a threat. And we talk about the reframing to make sure that you frame those stressors as a challenge so that you can stay positive because if it's a challenge to be overcome, then you just draw from your resources that you already have where you try to draw in resources that you don't. And those resources tend to come back to how am I spending my time or who do I have around me that I can, that I can work with and, and leverage to go vent and problem solve, to go plan to have a mindful minute so that I can you know, take that stress, absorb it, redirect it into um, a challenge to be overcome and then pick up and keep moving forward. So through that, you know, we emphasize that you as a leader, as a formal team leader, you're watched like you're on stage. So you have to maintain that positivity. Yeah. If you need a time to take a knee, then go find a quiet place, practice uh, a mindful minute. And I picked this up from a from, uh, uh, former Air Force officer who's a practitioner mm -hmm. in this. We yeah. learned about this through coaching. It's simple box breathing. Uh, you know, four by four by four by four, or I like the four, seven, eight method, four in, hold for seven, exhale yeah. for eight. You do that one time and it's a minute cycle and it brings your stress back down. It helps you recenter and refocus um, because then you can shape that work environment. You, you have control over that. And, uh, you know, D, I know you know the importance of leaders being able to establish a psychologically safe work environment and oh, yeah. them being positive and being open. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. So how does psychological safety um, go into your work? How, how do you approach that every day? Yeah. So when, when I work with, with clients and I work with groups, the, the premise of psychological safety is people feeling that they can be vulnerable to take risk, that they can feel um, safe to voice a dissenting opinion or to voice a, a outlying thought. So when I work with groups, we establish that trust early on, um, whether that be one-on-one -on -one or whether that be in a group through uh, sharing who we are, why we're here, what's important right. to us. And then we, we, I like to get the pain points out on the table early so people feel comfortable about having that candid, open conversation. Right. So when I work with, with, with uh, groups and our, or teams or I work with individuals, setting the tone for the environment, having this, uh, that uh, trust established early, showing mutual support, and then celebrating people showing up as their authentic self yeah. uh, and showing up with candor is huge. It's huge um, to, to build cohesion and to build confidence uh, in leaders and teams. Right. Yes, absolutely. So thank you for that. Um, so what happens if you have a leader that comes to you and says, I want to make these changes, but I don't know how, I don't know how to make, um, you know, my people be motivated. I don't know how to make it an, an open, safe space with certain people in, in my organization. How would you approach that? Yeah. So when I approach that uh, in a one-on-one, -on -one, when a leader comes up to me is, is uh, you know, I, I coach them through that. And the first thing that we, we establish is what is important about who you are and who you want to become with this desired result. Because the change, the, the goal, the objective is the end result. Right. You've got to understand first of, of who you are, who you want to become, what is important about this for you in the journey along the way. Right. And then we move into establishing the habit system. And to do this, I, I tend to use the grow model uh, for coaching, which is what's the goal? What's the outcome? Right. And I know you're familiar with this. Yeah. What's the outcome you want? What's your current reality right now? Let's talk about how are you currently feeling about the situation? What is it that you want to change? What, you know, where is this showing up? How is this impacting you currently in the, in the present and then I, I put them in a, in a uh, give them the opportunity. I invite them to explore visualization. 
Right. So picture yourself succeeding. Picture yourself obtaining yeah. this outcome. How does that feel? What does that look like? Who's involved? How long did it take you to get there? And then we move from, once they understand their current reality, then we go into, well, what options have you tried? Right. What, have you, what have you done so far? Who have you involved? What resources do you have available? What resources may you need that you don't have available? Yeah. And then we go through the W, you know, is the way ahead. Yeah. We have, we all, I always leave my clients, whether that be individual or, or a group with a tangible takeaway. What's our path forward? What is it we're going to do next? What resources do I have? Who's going to be involved? When will I take the first step and have it done by? So they know we didn't just talk through something, right? Yeah. We have something they can take with them as soon as I leave. I ultimately, yeah. I want to work myself out of a job. Yeah. Isn't that the dream? Like right there. I just, I want to make it so nobody needs me anymore. Yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's perfect. That's perfect. I love it. Um, and I love all, like all of the simple models that you would think, Hey, they taught this us in foundations where, you know, it's, it's much more advanced than that. It's really not. It's just, you know, establishing who you are, where you want to be and how you're going to get there. Oh, I 100% agree with you. That's that's a very insightful uh, statement you made. Is is you know something that clicked for me through going through the, the coaching process and coaching others is just the simple act of taking a thought and speaking it or writing it. You know, yeah. that's a transition moment for people that makes things real, and you can have better realizations when you're doing that. So you can try to self coach, which is which is good, and if you know how, that's great. Oh yeah. Or you can work with a coach. Yeah, if you know, if you know how, or you can work with a with a credentialed coach, a certified coach, to help bring that self awareness out in you, so you can take your thoughts and and transition them into you know tangible actions that you want to accomplish. Love it, love it. It's solving problems, right? That's why we all got into coaching is we wanted to solve the problems of the world. I bet. So, um, so what, what are you currently working on that supports this, you know, passion that brings the surge of energy to you? Yeah. So there's a few things that I'm, I'm currently working towards, uh, right now. So one is, is the growth of my company. I have a program I'm putting together. I'm hoping to have it ready to launch by February, um, yeah. where it's going to help new leaders or, or team leaders accelerate and race through their first hundred days. They're going to reclaim, uh, control of their time. They're going to accelerate their onboarding speed. They're going to clearly communicate with their employees and they're going to empower their team. So it's going to be a cohort of virtual program where we're going to break down and give you time management tools and techniques. We're going to give you frameworks to have difficult conversations. We're going to bring you together to practice those. There's going to be some uh, engaging activities along the way if you sign up for this. And then we'll leave you with a takeaway plan. So I'm working on that course uh, I'm co-authoring a book right now with Dr. Lauren Dinicenzo. Um, our manuscript is due on the 3rd of January to Stanford University Press. We're going to be under review here shortly and hopefully have something printed the next month where okay. leaders can understand the next, the 2.0 of leadership. It's not a top-down directive model anymore. Leadership can be shared amongst team members. It's a mm -hmm. social interactive process. Yeah. Um, and then most recently, I was asked, I'm, I'm partnering with the with a good friend of mine, shout out to Bill Corcoran Jr. here in Northeast Pennsylvania. Um, Bill is just a high speed, motivated entrepreneur who owns the uh, On The Stack uh, uh, team. So On The Stack podcast, he showcases local uh, uh, business leaders, local entrepreneurs, local academics, local sports uh, legacies on his show, and they come and talk about what's helped them be successful, what's yeah. worked for them through failure. So he and I, I'm actually uh, going to partner with him and start writing a a leadership concepts blog as one of his channels as part of the On the Stacks media team. So I, I, I am really excited about that. that uh, that'll be coming out here next month. Yes. Well, you know, I will definitely tune in. So I need that information for sure. <laughs> All right. So, um, well, what wisdom, if, if this was 10 years in the past, what wisdom would you give yourself as an upcoming um, person that's looking for their passion and wants to follow their passion? Yeah, I, I, dude, that's such a great, great reflection question. Um, so what wisdom would I, would I share, especially if I could go back and, and give it to my, myself 10 years ago? Um, for me, imposter syndrome 
uh, mm-hmm. is, is alive and well um, and understanding stress, right? So I would tell myself, and I would share this with others, you're already making an impact. And if you are a leader of people or if you interact with people, every interaction you have with people is an opportunity to leave a lasting impression. Yeah. Uh, you may not even know the impact you're having on somebody in the moment. And people will always remember how you make them feel. Yeah. Right? So take the opportunity, lift others up, uplift people. And I'll tell you um, a bit of wisdom that was, was shared with me one time. And this resonates here is, you know, as a boss, as a supervisor of people, don't think for one second that you are not a topic of conversation at somebody's dinner table. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what kind of conversation do you want them to be having about you? Love that. Right. Is it, oh, I can't believe what my boss did today. This, this person, right. Or is it, Hey, I got recognized today. My boss came, he actually said, he or she said, thank you. Right. Uh, Blew me away. I feel so good. I've got an opportunity coming up. Right. So what kind of boss do you want to be? And then when it comes to to teamwork and collaboration, you know, you're, you're, you're building a huge community here around uh, uh, what lights your fire and Mm -hmm. the fire within. And the, uh, metaphor I want to use here is that I think it's a metaphor. It might be an analogy. I'm not a major. <laughs> I don't know. But your candle doesn't dim when someone else's shines. They shine brighter together. So know that you're having an impact. Leave a lasting positive impression. Lift people up. And you're you don't have to blow somebody's candle out in order for yours to shine brighter. You actually shine brighter together. And that's where the power is. Is oh. when working togetherness. You just made my whole day. I was so happy right now. It, it's so true. Um, you know, and, and I feel like this show and, you know, you and I, this is a perfect example of that. You know, you lift other people to lift yourself up. Um, it's okay if someone else is shining a little brighter than you, you know, ask them if you can help them shine even brighter because they'll help you shine bright as well. Absolutely. And you and I, we, we found this, we could be an example of this. I've heard this with a few other people that want to get into our spaces. Yeah. It doesn't have to be competitive. It can be collaborative. It can be yes. complementary. You've got yes. skills that I don't. So if we can partner and we can pair or you find someone that can partner and pair with you, right. then you give, you give better for your clients and those that you're servicing. Absolutely. Uh, exactly. And I love at it, um, I, I was on a, an eco, uh, it was a humanity eco uh, webinar thing. And he had said, and I'm not very good with eco, I'm not very, obviously. Um, but what he had said was that the earth is going to be okay, because it's been here forever. And it's going to continue to be okay. What's not going to be okay is humanity. And humanity is what needs to take care of it. Humanity is what needs to take care of the earth in order for the earth to keep spinning, but we're not going to be able to do that if we continue to tear each other down. So I feel like that right there resonated so much with me. And then he was like, there's 7 billion people, you know, on this earth, you know, surely we can come, you know, together in small, you know, groups. And then all come together for the one, you know, uh, the one goal to accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. That's huge. It it really resonated with me a lot. Um, I think that when I was developing this, uh, you know, again, it really resonated to me. I was like, I got to save humanity. Um, (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm a do-gooder. So now, Will, we talked about 10 years in, in the past. So let's talk about 10 years in the future. So 10 years in the future, you've had, um, you know, your programs have succeeded. You have, you know, affected all these, you know, wonderful people. What are some, what are you celebrating? Um, And who's with you when you're celebrating? Yeah. So, so who's with me, of course, is my family. They, they are the biggest champions uh, for me. And, you know, they know it's a lot of late nights and early mornings. But um, I, I, you, you know, the, the support and love that they have for me, especially I have a few close friends, too, that uh, um, that lift me up and, and keep me moving forward. So th- they're they're definitely around me. Um, what am I celebrating? The specifics yes. 10 years from now. What would I everything? I want to know everything. We're, we're big celebrators here, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so first and foremost, I think I, I would want to celebrate having helped reframe how people think about leadership. And, and shift to that being a, a social interaction process that occurs between people and get away from this positionership um, uh, directive mind, mindset because people need led differently. The future of work is, is different. Um, 
I'd also want to have celebrated the uh, uh, ability to share my workshops and my training and my coaching with people, knowing that I've had impact on their lives. So if there is some way that I would 10 years from now have a, a former client or a former or a former, you know, uh, organization come back and say, man, we, we are better off for having had spent time you know, with you. That would be huge. Wow. Um, yeah. And then, you know, you know, specifics probably, you know, I'd like to have a best-selling book once it hits print. I'd love to be able to celebrate that. Maybe have a second uh, in process. Love it. Uh, and then always celebrating co- collaboration opportunities. I'd love to see uh, Fire Within Coaching just just take off on the stacks, <laughs> take off. You know, my my company shared leadership take off, so we can all be celebrating uh, sure. success together and and know that we're making an impact and having a positive uh, impact on on people and organizations. I love it. I love it. So, uh, well, you really do just, you, you, uh, encompass everything that, you know, we really believe on in this show, which is that human connection and really believing in each other and really wanting other to succeed. Um, so I really appreciate the human connection piece. Um, also the positivity, um, so you can tell that you are, you know, look, really looking forward to the impact that you're going to make and that really inspires people. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. Oh, no, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity to come on here and share my story, you know, mm-hmm. share my thoughts. It's been, um, you know, I've led teams in combat. I've led teams with poor supervision and toxic leaders from above. Mm-hmm. That's what drove me to go back to school to get my doctorate. It's what drove me to, to learn more and understand more about leadership and team dynamic. I truly believe that, you know, leaders and team members have impact on each other that, that resonates outside of the work environment. So why not, why not make it positive? Why not make it uplifting and upbeat? I love it. And on that note, so, you know, this is our first show, so I'm trying something new. So let's just, you know, have a quick celebrate. Put your arms up. There you go. Now we're done. Cheers to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Um, hopefully we'll talk to you again here um, in the future. I'm sure we will. And looking forward to future celebrations of your good work. Absolutely. Same to you. Cheers to your success. Thank you so much. So, Honored to be your inaugural guest. I love it. <laughs> thank you so much.